So what you're saying is, is that, that immunodeficiency in human beings, of course, exists. I mean, it could happen to anybody, not necessarily because of their sexual partners or drug transfusion. But then isn't there, in effect, no cure for AIDS? If it is something like because of your lifestyle or the chemicals in the water or this or that, that is beaten down an individual's immune system, and I'm not grouping anybody, not a, a homosexual, not a, a drug user, just an individual that has had their immune system so weakened because of their lifestyle, then there would not necessarily be a cure or even there, a place there, to look there, for but a But there is, but there is. It's in looking at the individual. Because what is called AIDS in, in one person is called, and is called AIDS in another person is a completely different thing. If you're a woman, you test HIV positive and you have a yeast infection, that's called AIDS. If you're a man and you test HIV positive and you have pneumonia, that's also called AIDS. When we're not looked at as individual people, we all get the same treatment, a toxic chemotherapy called AZT. When you're looked at in an individual, you get treatment for your pneumonia. Now, a a regular normal person who's tested HIV negative receives pneumonia treatment and, and they're told to go home, take a rest, take, take some time off work. They're not told to fill out your will, get ready to die, sign up with an AIDS organization, and it's all over with, nobody's going to want to touch you again, check out. That's where the problem is, is we treat everybody the same. There's 30 different illnesses and conditions that are listed under the category of AIDS. AIDS is not a disease, as many people think. It's a category, just like I was doing an analogy with someone the other day, housewares. You can't hold a houseware. You can have a blender or a dish, but there's no such thing as a houseware. There's no such thing as AIDS. There's only the blenders and the dishes and the, the pneumonias and the tuberculosis and all that stuff that goes in there. If you treat the person who is sick and leave alone those who have simply tested positive and well, there is no let's hope for a cure, let's wait for a cure, let's pray for a cure. The cure is here. And it, you can restore an immune system that has not been taken so far astray by the destruction of the bone marrow and, and the spleen and the liver and all that other stuff that AZT and all these wonderful drugs that AIDS organizations bring us and push on us. You can get better. There are many people who have and many people who stay well once they stop doing that. And you also need to, in a certain sense, get rid of what's in here, which causes a tremendous spiritual death. You tell somebody they're going to die, the lights go out. There's no hope for tomorrow. And every morning when you get up, I went through this. You know, my hair is falling. Oh, my God, it's a, it's a cancer pimple. It's not a pimple. <laughs> you know, you, you expect the worst of everything. And in this paradigm of AIDS, there is no way out. Everything is, is called a result of HIV. And I'm not joking. I read an article once that said a buildup of earwax is symptomatic of HIV. There's a young woman who called us the pregnancy stories again. I'm collecting them. This woman who called us who's pregnant, and she just had her baby. We got her off AZT, luckily, and the kid was actually born and born without the typical hole in its chest or six fingers or had to be therapeutically aborted or aborted itself. The child was born, and we hope it's going to be all right. In her subsequent visits to the doctor, she was told that the moles that she had developed during her pregnancy were symptomatic of HIV. I'm in a prenatal, prenatal class out in Simi Valley. Half the women in there are whining about moles during pregnancy because it's something that happens. Their names are Tammy and they've never tested positive. So nobody puts this crap on them. But it's a very hard thing to live with. To, to be told that you're supposed to die and to have everything that you turn on television and every magazine that you open tell you that too. So you've got to recover in two ways. One, find a doctor that's going to treat you like a human being and two, get enough information to believe that you have the right to be here and get well because you can. Could Yeah. Disease yeah. As anybody else. Yeah, somebody who's HIV positive can get over their yeast infection just like anybody else can. Somebody who's got pneumonia and has tested HIV positive can get over their pneumonia just like anybody else can. The trick is don't get into the system that pushes chemotherapy on you. A cancer patient does not get chemotherapy every day for the rest of their life. Nobody here is going to get cancer chemotherapy as a prevention of cancer that may occur 10 years down the line. That's what's screwing people up. That, that's what's making the difference between getting better and, and getting dead.